wow! Look at that! Oh my gosh, look at him munch! Hey, good morning everybody! Welcome to the vlog! It's raining, and I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. As for me, I'm gonna start my day off in the incubator and we're gonna cut a ball python clutch, but first we wanna check on the twinsies. Look at this one is coming on the egg, and this one is still hanging out in the egg. Oh my God, and they look exactly the same, which is really cool. So it's almost like they're identical twins. I don't know if they are, but they're at least the same mutation. And of course, we have some other retics have hatched out. This little monkey here, how exciting is that? I am so excited about hatching some of Lucy's babies. I know you guys have been excited too. And here's the second egg box. A bunch of babies are, oh my gosh. Look at how adorable these babies are. Ooh, and look at this one right here. Oh my gosh, that thing is absolutely incredible. But as for now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut two really quick clutches of ball python eggs before we get over to the reptarium and see what's going on. This first one is actually a super vanilla pastel bred to a pinstripe. So everything's gonna be vanilla. Some's gonna be pastel, some are gonna be pinstripe. And as you can see, these eggs actually are already pipped, so it should be pretty easy to go ahead and see what's going on. What do you say we go into the first egg? And this is the only egg out of the entire clutch that wasn't pipped out, so let's see what's inside of here, and hopefully there's going to be a beautiful little baby snake. Oh my gosh, yes, right off the rip. Oh man, that's a pretty snake. And basically what it is, that vanilla just really cleans it up and as it gets bigger, it even gets more pretty. Moving on to egg two. And as you can see, these snakes have really ripped up those eggs. That's what they do with these egg teeth, you know? Oh, look at how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's what that vanilla can do to a pastel. Oh doggy, that thing is beautiful. Man, I tell you, that is some beautiful animals. I love vanillas. And look at this, guys. Look at this, guys. Another lemon blast vanilla. Again, this would be a pastel, a pinstripe, and a vanilla mix. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, this egg is so shredded. It's unbelievable. Okay, so what we have here is just a normal vanilla. Again, because it's a super vanilla, we know every single baby in the entire clutch is at least a vanilla. And then we'll see what's in this egg here. Come on, little monkey. Okay, here we go, another pastel vanilla. Interesting how different this one looks compared to this one. That is really interesting. I wonder what's going on with that. That almost looks like it has another gene in it. When this hatches out, I'm gonna have to take a look at that one. Let's see what we've got. Okay, yep, that is just a pastel vanilla here. Another really beautiful one. And again, they kinda of have a lot of polymorphism. Kinda of interesting, one more egg. All right, let's see what we get here, and then we'll move on to this next clutch, which is really an exciting clutch. Okay, there we go. Again, you know what? This is interesting, guys. This is definitely a vanilla, it's a pastel, but two of these look like they have lesser in them, which is weird. Like, how is there a lesser unless the pinstripe was a kingpin? I'm gonna have to go back and take a look because that certainly looks like a lesser. Regardless, awesome clutch, moving on to this next clutch. This clutch is actually a pewter cypress bred to a spider. So the pewter cypress is a pastel, it's a cinnamon, and it's a cypress, and of course it's bred to a spider. Should be some interesting babies. Gonna be hard to tell even what these babies are in the egg, to be honest with you. But let's go ahead and just jump into A number one and see what we have here see if we can actually decipher what is going on with these guys okay right off the rip we have a spider for sure hmm I don't know that might be a cypress spider. You see that striping on it? The striping is something that really dictates that cypress. Certainly you can see right there a lot of striping something you wouldn't typically see with a spider. Egg number two see what we got here oh okay interesting well, that is definitely a spider and a cinnamon. Really hard to tell if that's a cypress, but again, there's a lot of striping in it. So when this one hatches out, I'm gonna have a much better understanding of what's going on. I have a feeling a lot of these eggs are gonna be like that, where I'm gonna be like, I'm not 100% sure until they hatch out. But we're gonna keep on trying and see if we see something that's like, oh yeah, that's a for sure one. Okay, what do we have here? Ooh, wow, look at that. That absolutely looks like a pewter bee for sure, possibly a cypress. Cause again, the cypress gene will really clean things up as well. And that looks really clean. Look at that. Woohoo, doggy. We have a handful of eggs still to go. So I'm pretty excited about what we've been hatching so far. Awesome, awesome. Ooh, this is pretty. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Oh my gosh, that right there is a pewter ball python, possibly a cypress because it's really clean. Here we go, another egg. 
See what we got here. Okay, look at that. Wow. That again is definitely a pewter spider possible cypress. And again, that cypress gene is a real subtle gene sometimes, especially when you start mixing into cinnamon and spider and stuff like that. So until these hatch out, it's hard to tell. Once they hatch out, we can really look at the pattern, the cleanliness, stuff like that. We'll have a much better idea. But there's definitely a few cypress in here so far. Here we go on the second from last egg. Oh my God, I'm gonna miss cutting eggs so bad. Oh, this is good. This is definitely an interesting animal here. That's definitely gotta have cypress in it. But I'm not sure what else. Maybe a cine spider cypress? Look at that striping on it. That's a dead giveaway for a cypress right there. Hmm. I don't know, that's pretty cool. And then the last egg here, and we will see if we have something that we can actually decipher, or we're gonna have to wait till all of these climb out of the egg before we know 100% what is going on with these little monkeys here. Okay, what do we have here? Interesting. Hmm, this is interesting here. It's a really clean looking normal, I think. Maybe, I don't know. There might be something else going on. Again, that's basically it. I knew whenever you cut a cypress clutch, you'd never really know what's going on until they climb out of the egg. So I have a bunch of question marks there. When they climb out, we'll have 100% of an idea of what's going on. As for now, let's go ahead and head over to BHB and the Reptarium. Next up, what I have to do is hook up all these misters, right? And so we have some that are doubles and we have some that are singles. One of the things that's really good if you're hooking them to a screen is get big washers like this. And basically you can put these over. So you unscrew this, you put this on one side of the screen, and then you put a washer on the other side of the screen, and then you screw it together. That way this doesn't rip out, because trust me, if you just screw this into the screen, pretty soon it's gonna rip out and tear, and there's gonna be a big hole. Maybe if you have a little lizard, it's gonna get out and so like that. So these washers are a great thing. Then we have like all these little T's, and basically what you're doing is you're just using tubing like this and you push the tubing in here and it clamps right in place. So basically all I have to do is put all these on the tops of the cages that I want. Then I have to run tubing all the way along the top of the ceiling over to my mister. Ultimately going to go into an RO water supply. Then three to five times a day we can actually miss everything. We don't have to do it manual if that makes any sense. So for now I am just literally going to be poking a bunch of holes in the screen. Mary just came and told me we have another surprise clutch of mangroves. Yep. What the heck? I tell you what I don't I don't know how to breed these darn things because I thought that they laid like early in the summer and here they are giving us surprise clutches so we didn't even have an egg box in so let's take a look oh my gosh these look really good but they are kind of spread all over the place obviously in a perfect world we would have had an egg box in and she would have laid them all together you can see that a couple of them are a little bit dented but i don't think that's going to be a problem i think they're going to be completely fine so let's go ahead and pull this clutch of eggs we've got one egg mama seems to be okay last clutch we had certainly mama wasn't very happy so we've got two eggs three eggs here and we've got of course three beautiful white eggs here what i'm going to do is candle these really quick just to make sure she didn't roll them around we have one little slugger right there and what a beautiful clutch of eggs i mean my gosh i am so excited good job mom you did so good and she looks really good too i love how she doesn't have the bands down her back like this what an amazing animal so again i'm going to go ahead and candle these eggs get them in an egg box get them hydrated up a little bit because again there's a little bit of dimpling in them and they should be completely fine again like we said last time about a hundred days till they hatch as a matter of fact speaking of hatching mangroves i think i'm going to go ahead and check on those little babies that hatched last week i'm with eric obviously so Eric, show me these baby mangroves. I actually haven't Ooh. seen them since they hatch. Are they I cold love or? these guys. They are so freaking. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Cool. Crazy. You know, I don't, that, the red color on them is what's got me tweaked out. I mean, do they bite or anything? I really haven't checked it out yet. I'm a little bit nervous, okay? Right. I know they're sub-venomous. I don't think that this size they could even They couldn't even thing. hurt you, I, right? I don't know. You want to try? Yeah, we'll try. No, no, I don't, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I know. But isn't it cool? I mean, the fact that they, I, like I said, last year when we raised up some babies that I bought, they were actually like brown and tan and then turned black and yellow. These guys right off the back are already black and yellow and then there's some red on them. The which red is and the orange, I, I didn't think they would come out like that. So it is really surprising. And I don't know if it's uh, reduced patterning or what it is. Dude, they do look like that. And the stripes are a little small. I, they're, they're unreal. They're beautiful. They're I can't even. Blue. And these are much bigger than the ones Ones that again I bought last year that were captive hats. So hopefully they'll eat really well. You have you, you're gonna try to feed them this week? Yep, yep. They're just getting their first sheds out. So as soon as they shed, we're gonna offer them some food. That's awesome. I cannot wait to see these guys hopefully eat and do well. And hey, now we have six more babies on the way. Back at the reptarium, it is feeding day. We're feeding what? Frogs and what else? Anything that gets insects. We get insects. our insects on Tuesday, so we want to feed them off as soon as possible. Okay, good. So we're feeding insects. We've got a lot of stuff now that eats insects here. So let's go ahead and feed them up.
feeding's going really well. Nova. Oh no, but you're so silly. Oh my gosh. Look at him munch. He is so cool. Oh my god. I actually don't think I've ever seen them feed Nova before. I just assumed they left it in there. Oh I think my we gosh. usually do, but this is fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's so much fun. Oh gosh, Nova. <laughs> Uh, you guys know I've been talking about trying to cover up these 2x4s with something, so Lori tried to come up with a solution. What's going on with this? It looks a little short. Well, I'm thinking that we're gonna, I'm going to try to see if I can layer it. Just and layer then, it? And then, yeah. Well, and you got to remember that, really, you know, it's not like people are going to pay a lot of attention because it's through the side. We just want to do it. And we want to do different things, right? You have, what, this, like, this, and is there something on the back, too? And there's so sort of there's a like rock. like a rock on the back, and then some will have, like, this type of thing right here that looks... So we're trying to, like, kind of vary it up a whole, whole bunch, right? Yes. It'll be very varied, and it will look very good. Yeah, I mean, let's hope so, because if not, I'm going to be pretty upset with you. Okay, good talk. Lucy's probably gonna shed tomorrow, so I'm gonna go in and just give her a little miss because I want her to try to shed as complete as possible. By the way, Friday at six o'clock, if you come by the Reptarium, you're gonna see us feed Lucy. So uh, if you're interested in that, come by Friday at six o'clock. All right, so I have all of the nozzles up in all of the cages that need to be sprayed. I think there was a total of 18 or 19 of them, if I'm not mistaken. All I have to do now is run the hose and then ultimately hook it up to the pump and so like that. I probably am not gonna be able to get it finished today because it'll probably take me the next hour or so to run the hose and then to get it all set up. So probably finish this tomorrow, but that's okay. By tomorrow morning, we won't have to go through and manually spray. We'll be able to use the misting system. Just another thing to check off the list. And speaking of checking off the list, I'm actually gonna do these cages too. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to build the racks on them. If I get really lucky and get some progress made, I can start to rock the fronts like I have this here and uh, get these done. And maybe even by this weekend, we'll be able to have animals in these cages here. And of course, we're gonna be wrapping around this side all the way to cages over here. Again, not 100% sure I'm gonna be able to be that ambitious and finish it in one day, but I'm gonna give it the best shot I can give it. It's about 9.30 at night, been working since six in the morning, so definitely about ready to shut it down. Just kind of giving a mental inventory. Lucy should shed tonight like I mentioned this Friday at six o'clock we're hoping we're gonna be able to feed her in public for you guys if you guys come out uh, this girl looks absolutely amazing all of the cages are looking good look at how great karma looks I mean he is loving his new cage Fetty Wap is loving it I tell you what it is so great to see these animals as you can see Abasuku is way up in top over there Bella is in her normal spot sleeping for the night loves to nip is just hanging out over here of course over here we have Artemis Prime just hanging out being the Artemis Prime that he normally is. And look at Perdita. Oh my gosh, is she looking amazing. I love it here. And as much as I hate to go home because I just love it so much, I do have to get some rest because I have definitely been burning the candle on both ends. And speaking about burning candles, what do you say we make a quick walkthrough with the lights out? You guys know that I love that. Yes. This is what I love the place the most, guys. When you're here, you guys can come out and we'll turn the lights on. You can just check it out. I mean, just look at how freaking cool everything is. I don't know. There's something about zoos at night that just have always interested me. I've had the pleasure of being able to be in a number of zoos after hours, and I've always been the happiest when that happens. I tell you, this is just absolutely incredible. With that said, I was able to check one more thing off the list. We will test out the misters in the morning. Basically, everything is hooked up. I just don't want to run them tonight and have an issue with them. I'd rather do that during the day and I am going to go ahead and shut down the vlog and get some rest like I spoke about before and wish you guys an absolutely amazing day, evening, whenever you happen to be watching. Your support means the world to me. You guys are so special and I love you guys so much. It's like I keep saying, I can't do this journey without you guys, so thank you so much. Please do me a couple favors before you get out of here. Can you smash that like button? Turn the post notifications on. Make sure to make a comment because I love reading about you guys and you guys have been killing the comments and likes lately so thank you so much be kind to someone today and i promise i will see you guys tomorrow